Welcome back. For today's Business Matters, we have Don Ma here with us. Don, good to see you. What's happening? Good to see you as well. So a lot uh, to go through today, so let me get started right away. Uh, starting off here with Ford, it is expecting to end the year on the lower end of its earnings forecast. CEO Jim Farley told analysts that the legacy car maker has been hit by a global price war fueled by overcapacity in the electric vehicle market. Ford has also been hurt this year by high warranty costs and supply chain problems exacerbated by the recent hurricanes. Meanwhile, McDonald's reported a larger than expected drop in global quarterly sales, and this drop was affected by lower demand in key markets like Europe and the U.S. The company expects further challenges as it reels from a deadly E. coli outbreak. At least one person has died from that. Shares declined nearly 7% last week as infections rose to 75 people. McDonald's temporarily stopped serving quarter pounders last week in 20% of its 14,000 U.S. restaurants. Sliced onions used in the hamburgers are likely to be the source of the infection. The Colorado Department of Agriculture ruled out beef patties as the possible cause. Okay, President Biden today announced a $3 billion investment for port infrastructure. The money is linked to the Inflation Reduction Act. The investment includes nearly $150 million in awards for the Maryland Port Administration, which owns the Port of Baltimore. The funding will be used to create union jobs and upgrade port infrastructure to cleaner equipment. Officials says uh, the grants also will advance environmental justice, uh, this by reducing diesel air pollution from U.S. ports. Meanwhile, massive borrowing by the U.S. Treasury. The department plans to borrow nearly $1.4 trillion over six months. $546 billion will be borrowed from October to December, and $823 billion is expected from January to March. This increased borrowing reflects growing debt and fiscal challenges. The national debt is currently near $36 trillion and interest payments continue to rise. They now eat up a significant part of federal revenues. This surge coincides with new Treasury securities being issued, uh, many bought by foreign investors as domestic demand weakens. Meanwhile, economists warn the debt outlook remains uncertain. It isn't expected to stabilize by 2029. Retribution begins for Chase Bank customers who allegedly stole money from ATMs using what came to be known as the infinite money glitch. The bank is now suing them. Here's the story. J.P. Morgan Chase has begun suing customers who allegedly stole money from its ATMs using an apparent software glitch. People were writing fraudulent checks and basically uh, taking writing a check and put it into their Chase bank account, and then they're withdrawing that money from an ATM. Financial expert Joe Schmidt says it even became a viral TikTok trend, sometimes called the infinite money glitch. This video viewed over 100,000 times. There's a glitch right now. They giving out the, they giving everybody money. Shows a young woman telling her mother about the glitch. No, thank you. I paid. Thank you for trying, though. I'll pay. <laughs> you lame. The bank is investigating thousands of incidents, but has not yet been repaid. A notable case involves over $290,000, allegedly stolen by a Houston man. Other amounts range from $80,000 to $141,000. The bank has not disclosed the total amount that was stolen in the viral scam. If you make a deposit, usually there's a hold, you know, put on the deposit by the bank for a period of time until they can verify and clear it. But in this case, there was a glitch. Financial expert Lawrence Sprung says usually only a small amount of a check can be withdrawn during the hold period. But because of the glitch, people were able to withdraw all of it. J.P. Morgan Chase wants not only the return of the stolen money, but also interest overdraft fees, lawyers' fees, and punitive damages. And your favorite local shop may lose its top spot in Google search. That's because the tech giant is updating its local service ads. This could impact millions of small businesses. Only businesses with a verified Google business profile will be able to run the ads 
which appear at the top of the search results. Google said the move is to crack down on fraud. To be a verified business, owners must add or claim their business address with Google. Legitimate small businesses who are unaware of the new requirement could be hurt by the policy change. The new rule goes into effect November 21st. PepsiCo has announced that it will be closing a bottling plant in Chicago. The Teamsters Union says this could cost up to 150 jobs. The company said the 60-year-old building has physical limitations that it would pay workers uh, for the next 60 days, though they won't be required to work. The union said the move to lay off over 100 workers with no notice was in violation of their agreement it made with PepsiCo. The Teamsters Union said it may take legal action. PepsiCo said it will work with the union to support employees during what it described as a transition. Now, inflation may be easing, but financial pressure on the middle class is mounting. A survey by the National True Cost of Living Coalition revealed that as of June, 65% of middle class Americans are struggling financially. And more shockingly, this group does not expect their situation to improve over their lifetimes. Inflation has eased substantially from its peak, but it hasn't necessarily translated to lower prices. Some of the most significant expenses for middle class families include housing, child care and health care. In another recent survey, three quarters of middle class families reported actively uh, cutting back on non-essential expenses. Housing prices climbed as well in August and mortgage rates remain elevated. It's setting a new summit that prospective home buyers are unable to reach. The Federal Housing Finance Agency reports that house prices continue to rise month on month, jumping about 4% from a year earlier. Data shows the average rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage increased last week from the week prior. Renovation and TV design hosts, the Property Brothers, are weighing in on the differences they're seeing in today's housing market. Drew and Jonathan Scott both noted the impacts of a housing shortage. Jonathan th said that uh, it impacts everything from the unhoused problem to the cost of housing. The federal government moves against AI in China. The Biden administration announced new rules yesterday that they will limit investments in AI and other technology sectors in China that could threaten national security. The rules were proposed in June by the Treasury Department. They were directed by an executive order signed by President Biden in August 2023. It covered semiconductors and microelectronics, quantum information technologies, and certain AI systems. The rules cover technologies like cutting-edge code-breaking computer systems or next-generation fighter jets. They're part of a broader push to prevent U.S. know-how from helping the Chinese regime to develop sophisticated technology. The European Union is set to impose extra tariffs on Chinese-built electric vehicles tomorrow. They come from a year-long high-profile anti-subsidy probe. The European Commission will set out tariffs ranging from 7.8% for Tesla to 35.3% for China's SAIC. They come on top of the EU standard 10% car import duty. The new rates will take effect on Thursday. European automakers are grappling with an influx of lower cost EVs from Chinese rivals. The EU has said tariffs are required to counter unfair subsidies, including preferential financing and grants, as well as land batteries and raw materials at lower market prices. In apparent retaliation to the EU tariffs, the Chinese regime has launched its own probes this year into imports of EU brandy, dairy and pork products. And a new solar facility in Ohio is reaping the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act. On the outside, it looks like an all-American win with new jobs and state-of-the-art solar panel production. But on the inside, it's a triumph for the U.S.'s main geo geopolitical rival, China. That's because the company Illuminate USA is majority owned by Invenergy, an American firm, and minority owned by Longji Green Energy Technology, which is a Chinese solar giant. That means both firms are benefiting from millions in incentives and federal tax credits. There's a bipartisan movement underway in Congress to block Chinese-backed firms from claiming tax credits. Illuminate's chief legal officer argues it has a minority partner based in China and is not a Chinese company trying to do business in the U.S. Now, the world's first all-in-one hearing health experience is finally here, and Apple has launched its highly anticipated hearing aid software update. 
Now, AirPods Pro 2 owners can run a hearing test and turn on new hearing features. Take a look. Clinical grade. Apple is pioneering hearing with its new free software update for its AirPod Pro 2. You know, we're all wearing these types of earbuds anyway. So now the FDA has authorized them to have the software to become an over-the-counter hearing aid. So it's just mainstream. And anybody who is concerned about a little bit of stigma and they want to just look like everybody else, well, you will because we all have a set of these in our pockets. The hearing aid feature is available with AirPods Pro 2 models only, and it requires an iPhone or iPad to set it up. It starts with built-in tests that will help users determine if they have hearing loss. If they do, they are promoted to set up the feature and personalize amplification levels. It would allow you to actually go through the steps of checking or screening your hearing. Um, it'll take those tests and actually plot it along a hearing graph that looks like an audiogram. And through that, you can firstly adjust the sound quality of the devices to actually improve any kind of streaming media, streaming music, streaming through your phone or through your iPad. Um, additionally, it also has a hearing protective mechanism. According to the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders, an estimated 30 million people have hearing loss in both ears. But millions have never tried a hearing aid. Federal regulators are trying to change that. Two years ago, they allowed hearing aids to be sold over the counter. Every day I learn about more and more more um, over-the-counter hearing aids that are being released. Um, I think there are some notable companies or notable differences between companies. I tell patients or for those that are considering either over-the-counter or prescription devices, I try to tell them to get the technology that fits within their budget and choose the best one that is considered affordable to them. Experts believe the AirPod Pro's device will be a good addition simply because of the way it could help normalize hearing aids and make it mainstream. Before your next takeoff, take a look at your new passenger rights because the Transportation Secretary says automatic airfare refund rules took effect yesterday. If your flight is disrupted and you don't rebook, you get an automatic cash refund within 20 days. That applies to cancellations, domestic delays of three or more hours, and international delays of at least six hours. Separate rules mandate a luggage fee refund if you don't get your bag by a certain time, and refunds for prepaid services like seat selection and Wi-Fi if you don't receive them. Passengers who use credit cards to pay for fares can get refunds within a week. And this year's Halloween is being haunted by poor crop seasons and higher prices. A scary spike in prices for chocolate has shoppers steering away from Kit Kats and M&Ms. The National Confectioners Association says there has been a 5% drop in chocolate candy units sold over the past year. Cocoa, the key ingredient in chocolate, has been impacted by a streak of poor crop seasons. As a result, the producer price index shows prices for chocolate and confectionery manufacturing from cocoa are up 45% for the first nine months of the year. All right, now on to markets. S&P 500, Nasdaq closed higher today, while the Dow fell in choppy trading. Uh, so investors digesting a host of corporate earnings and, of course, awaited Google Parent Alphabet's results, which is coming later. Uh, now, this is the busiest week for S&P 500 earnings in the quarter, with eyes on five of the magnificent seven companies that are reporting results. Uh, the group's results will be crucial to determining whether Wall Street can sustain the optimism around technology and artificial intelligence that has lifted indexes to record highs this year. Uh, of course, investors are also anticipating a volatile few weeks with more corporate earnings to be expected in Middle East tensions and let's not forget the November 5th US elections. All right, that's all for today in Business Matters and back to you guys, Carrie, Fiona. Don, that's pretty interesting being able to use your AirPods for, as a hearing aid. Definitely, it sure be more convenient for, uh, for a lot of people because, I mean, when I'm on the train, I see uh, plenty of people wearing AirPods. 
And, and the new hearing test feature is pretty cool as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I'll, I'll personally be needing this service anytime soon, hopefully, but I am glad that it is there and that it is a technology that's being developed. I think this is great for people who need it. I might yeah. be needing it myself pretty soon, Fiona. <laughs> well, you can uh, take advantage of that hearing test feature to see if you'll need that soon or, or not. I'll report back to you tomorrow, Don, and I'll let you know how it goes. So. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Don.